this is one that I've been really interested in for a while. Since we saw the information come out in, I believe it was December, because it's supposed to have a Piva based midsole called Dream Strike Plus. Now on the Audi Zero SL, they have the Light Strike Pro up here, but the Dream Strike Plus that we're gonna see in the Supernova Rise is going to be in the entirety of the midsole. Boom. So when I first saw this guy online, I didn't love the colorway and I still don't. And there's another blue yellow colorway that's out right now that I think is a little bit better. But in person, it looks a little bit better, more palatable than it does online. But in general, this is a little bit of a weak colorway for launch. I wish they would have went with something a little less drab, but this will look good for winter running. Now you see here, they got the Dream Strike Plus marked here. So to the touch, it is pretty soft feeling, a lot softer than what we see in this Audi Zero SL here. And what this is going to compete with is the Nike Vomero 17. Now, both of these brands, Nike and Adidas, now have two daily trainers in this core lineup. So with Adidas, you got the Supernova Rise and the Audi Zero SL. And then in Nike's case, you have the Vomero and the Pegasus. So whereas the Audi Zero SL and Pegasus are more simple, cheaper, no frills or low frill shoes, these guys here are a little bit pricier. So the Vomero is gonna come at 160 and the supernova rise comes in at 140. so in terms of the specs here we're seeing 34 millimeters in the heel and 24 in the forefoot so it's definitely not up at that max stack range and it should feel decently cushioned but without feeling like it's a lot of foam underfoot and that's something that i look for in a daily trainer i do not like feeling like i'm fighting against the foam and that's one of the things that i love so much about the vomero here is that it still had a decently flexible forefoot even though the stack is reading at 29 in the Specs. It feels a little bit lower than that because of the way that they've laid out the rubber and they do still have a good degree of flexibility. So the Supernova Rise is coming in at 24. I personally find anything below 27 feels decently nimble still. And of course, this does not have a plate. It is a non-plated shoe, but it does have a firmer layer of EVA here and you can see these gray pieces. So this is a stiffer foam that's gonna function as a little bit of a support, add some more stability here out in the back. And if we compare it to the Audi Zero SL, you're gonna see it has a little bit of a chunkier heel here for hopefully a more stable planted landings. Now the Audi Zero SL actually had decent amount of padding around the back here and around the upper in general, but the Supernova Rise just looks a little bit more comfortable, a little bit chunkier out here in the back. The tongue is definitely more padded than what we see against the Audi Zero SL here. And we're also seeing the foam rise up along the sides a little bit more, which is a design trend we're seeing right now that again, helps lock that foot in place and add some more stability to the shoe. Now, in terms of the rubber, we're seeing a really comprehensive layout on the front and the back. The one downside is that it is not the continental rubber like we see on the Boston 12 here. So the Continental that we get on the Boston 12 and a few of the other Adidas shoes is extremely grippy. So I'll be interested to see how this Audi wear here, that's what they call it, the Audi wear rubber outsole, does in wet conditions. Although I do have to say that the rubber we got on the Audi Zero SL was very sticky and had almost the same wet weather performance as the Continental. I have to say as well, I've gotten great durability out of the Adidas shoes. You can see with the Audi Zero SL, this is almost at 300 miles and there's a little bit of, I think this was blue before and it rubbed down to the black here. But in terms of the layer of rubber, it's still almost as tall as it was right out of the box. So I gotta do a 300 mile review of the Audi Zero SL at some point soon. But the Supernova Rise with the rubber layout that we have here and how much coverage we have on the outside lateral area, looks like it's gonna be another highly durable shoe. And for comparison's sake here, you can see on my Boston 12, we got the same thing. Again, we've rubbed it flat, but we still got some good coverage here. And this one is at, I believe, 260 or 200. 170 miles. So the idea of where this sits in the Adidas lineup is as a comfort oriented everyday running shoe that still has enough pop for faster miles. So it's not going to be a max cushion cruiser, but it's also not going to be designed for any true speedier efforts because that's where the Boston 12 and Audi Zero SL come in. All right guys, now let's do a little bit of a weigh in with these and see where they sit across some of these other shoes in the market. All right, today we're going to use the Daniels running formula as our germ shield. So first up, we got the Supernova Rise left shoe. That is coming in at 304 grams. That is the heaviest shoe that we've weighed on the scale so far. Wow, so that's the left shoe. And then right shoe is 300 grams, 299. Let's average those out, let's call it 302. I'll tell you in a second. Fire up the old Google machine here. Like I already had a grams to ounce converter up. 
302 grams to ounce. And that is 10.6 ounces, which is not a light pair of shoes by any means, especially compared to what we've been running in. But sometimes it is nice to have a little bit more protection versus just going for the straight up lightest shoe possible. If we compare that to Adidas' other daily trainer, the Audi Zero SL, yeah, this guy's coming in at 277 grams for the left shoe here. And that is 9.7 ounces. So a full ounce lighter in the Audi Zero SL versus the Adidas Supernova Rise. Now, if we take a look at the Boston 12, this guy's coming in at 268. So we're just dropping weight, <laughs> dropping weight as the price goes up. And that's gonna convert to 9.45 ounces. So again, a full ounce plus a little bit lighter than the Supernova Rise. Now, if we look at the Nike shoes, I know the Vimero is a heavy guy. So that's coming in at 302, 303 as well, which is identical to the Supernova Rise. And this didn't feel like a particularly light shoe on foot. Definitely not, especially it feels a little bottom heavy with the rubber, but I do like how built up this guy feels. It's a really nice daily trainer. So I don't mind the weight of this. So if it's coming in the same as the Vomero, it's probably not gonna be too bad, especially given how much cushioning and comfort is built into this. And then last year, if we take a look at it against the peg, Pegs coming in at 286 grams, and that is 10 ounces exactly. Now I know I said last, but I actually wanna grab a few more so we can have a cushioned daily trainer weight analysis versus guy. So on Cloud Monster, this would be another one that competes in spirit with the Supernova Rise, although the Cloud Monster is a much trendier shoe than the Supernova Rises. This is coming in at 282, so that undercuts the Supernova Rise in weight by a little bit. Now we got the New Balance 1080 here. This is a little bit of a more cushioned shoe, but 288. So again, you're getting more stack here, but you're also getting less weight. I think that's because this has some EVA foam built in with this gray layer here. So that's gonna be where the excess weight is coming from in the Supernova Rise versus the 1080. All right guys, last year we got the Velocity Nitro 3. And this guy's coming in at 285, so again, undercuts the Supernova Rise. And that's very similar to the Pegasus, almost exactly 10 ounces in my US Men's 10.5. So the Supernova Rise is going to be on the upper end of weight when it comes to this daily trainer segment, closest to the Vomero. But if this can provide a nice amount of cushioning and some pop from this little bit of a rocker here we see up front, I won't mind the weight. I don't mind having a little bit of a heavier shoe. That's not an issue for me, especially if it's not a speed training shoe as this thing is not designed to be set in any PRs. It's really supposed to be a cushioned, comfortable everyday running shoe. So with that, let's try this thing on, see how it fits. All right guys, so first try on of the Supernova Rise. I mean, just pulling on this tongue here, it just feels like a super comfy shoe. But ooh, on step and feel, it's a little deceiving. Not the most comfortable on step in. It's a little firmer than I expected. And guys, I'm wearing the darn tough socks today, which are a little bit, these are wool socks, and they're a little bit thicker than my typical running socks. Decently generous, definitely not as snug in the toe box as some other shoes we've been running in recently. Definitely nowhere near as snug as Puma. So I'm a US men's 10 and a half. My toe is ending right up here, which is not bad. This fits perfectly actually, and I don't have too much rubbing. I have a tiny bit of room against the side here. You can see right there, my foot isn't bulging, so I shouldn't be rubbing up against the side. Man, this is not the colorway that I would have picked if I were able to buy these shoes. These were sent to me for free by Adidas, so I can't look a PR horse in the mouth. But definitely not my favorite colorway. So we are gonna run in these bad boys in the morning, but Initial fit, they feel pretty good. I have enough room up in the toe box. That is a concern with some of these shoes. I don't have wide feet, but I also need a little bit extra room on the side here, and they don't feel like they're poking in. Also, the insole arch area feels good. There's nothing weird bumping out. That was an issue I had with the Audi Zero SL. It has a little bit of a weird bump here, and I'm not getting that. So the fit of these is definitely more normal than the Audi Zero SL. Probably a little better than the Boston, especially because we're getting this heel down here. I'll report back after the first run whether or not I was getting any slipping, but it doesn't seem like I will, given how good the lockdown is right now. All right, guys, it is 8.21 p.m. Gotta finish editing a video, and then I'll see you in a GIF for the first run.
What's up, buddy? Did you enjoy how nice it is outside today? It's beautiful. Right, guys we're out here at the greenway this morning and get this first run in the supernova rise now one of the things i'm super interested in checking is how the piba content comes through in this now they're calling it a piba midsole i'm not sure if it's 100 percent and we have had some experience recently with the New Balance Rebel V4. That has 20% PIBA in it. And what I'm realizing is that PIBA can have ton of different feel, tons of different character, different applications based on the shoe. You've got the beaded PIBA, like in the tier Valkyrie Elite and the Saucony Power Run. You got the nice super critical PIBA, like we see in something like the Diodora Gara and that more zoom -y soft feeling. Then you also have denser PIVA, and that's the application we're seeing here. So underfoot, as I'm doing this little walk around here, pushing down, it is not super squishy. It almost feels like an EVA or an EVA blend. But I was wearing these around the house last night, and they were very comfortable just walking around. So I am optimistic. We'll have to see how much energy return they have, though, how much bounce I get when I pick up the pace a little bit. I'm going to do a stroller ride. So the plan is not to be pushing it too hard, but just to get some miles in and maybe pick up the pace here and there to see how they bounce. About a mile and a half in so far. The lockdown's actually pretty good. I just need to retie them because I didn't tie them tight enough. It's always hard with new shoes knowing how hard you gotta crank down the laces. But anything with a roomier upper and a little bit of a softer, not performance fit. I wouldn't say this has a performance race day upper. Any of these types of shoes, I generally have to crank them down a little bit. This upper is giving me a little bit of 1080 vibes. Not as comfortable, but the padding is there. This tongue is super padded, back is super padded. And it's definitely not as stretchy. Also the 1080 is $25 more expensive than this. But so far this Peepa has given me a nice little bit of pop. And I've just been jogging along here. Of course I haven't dropped the hammer with the stroller yet. Maybe we'll do that at some point. But just jogging along here, it's a nice little bit of pop and very stable but as i said last week man stability is now table stakes for running shoes in 2024 we should make a least stable or worst worst not stability shoes list because almost every shoe i test now is has some degree of good stability built in all right let's keep pushing Now it's definitely a little bit of a change running in a higher drop shoe and I can feel that 10 millimeter drop. The heel is a little bit chunky, not chunky, but it's tall, especially compared to the Rebel, which I've been running in. And that has a six millimeter drop, but it's good to mix up the drop.
permission here to enjoy the pond. Stretch the legs for Reese V-Boy. This is a little bit of a confusing shoe so far. It's giving me some workhorse vibes, but then it also has this pep to it and you can feel the rocker up front. So I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how we're gonna how we're gonna break this down. A little bit of a confusing shoe. Supernova rise. Alright, we got ten and a half this morning at an 807 pace, which is a lot harder than it sounds with the stroller. So we're gonna go home, do snack time, well do the park maybe, do snack time, and then I'll slip into the backyard to give you my full thoughts, but a few things before I forget them. One is this is not a light and airy Piva foam. It is a dense formulation. And then the second thing I wanted to say before it left me was that this is a confusing shoe because it felt a little bit peppier and poppier at the beginning of the run and then felt like it lost its steam toward the back half as I was losing steam, which is a little odd. So we're gonna go home and then I'll give you the full thoughts on these. It's a very comfortable walking shoe though. All right guys, so we're out in the backyard with these Supernova Rise and our water and our coffee. But I have a few other shoes out here that I highlighted last night because I really wanna talk about my experience with the Supernova Rise within the context of how it compares to the Nike Vomero 17 because this is really gonna be the head-to-head -head competitor with it when we think about these big running shoe brands. Then also, the main differences between the Supernova Rise, at least after my first run, and the Audi Zero SL, because this is the other performance daily trainer in Adidas's lineup. And then of course, how it compares to the tried and true Pegasus, because whether you like it or not, this is still the standard daily trainer for a lot of people out there, especially because this is what you can pick up at your local big box store, Dick Sporting Goods, as that go-to shoe. It's really this and the Brooks Ghost. So with that, let us get into some analysis on the Adidas Supernova Rise. All right, guys, so first run in the Adidas Supernova Rise, we did a cool 10 miler with the stroller down at the McAlpine Creek Greenway. It was fantastic. We took a little break at the halfway mark, walked around the pond there, tried to get Reevesy Boy to do a full lap. He wouldn't do it. And then we did snack time and play time at the park after. It was a great morning. Anyway, Supernova Rise here was an interesting shoe. And I said this, it's a little bit of a confusing shoe to figure out because it has a Piva foam. And traditionally, we think about Piva as this soft, bouncy, fast, lightweight material but that's not what i was getting out of the supernova rise right out of the box and then at the same time with the stack that we have here above 30 millimeters it's 34 in the heel I was also wondering, is this gonna have more of that cushioned max stack feel? It's not quite up to the high 30s that we see, and Adidas doesn't have a super competitive max stack shoe, but that's not what this is either. So it took a little bit of time for me to wrap my head around the experience that I was getting, and also where this is gonna fit into the market. But where I'm landing after this first run is that it's a moderately cushioned daily trainer competing with the likes of Vomero, Gel Cumulus, Saucony Ride. Now, as we've been highlighting on the channel recently, it's still Stability is table stakes in the running shoe market right now. So while this is a neutral shoe, they have some stability features baked in, and that is one of the key selling points of the shoe. So this is the Dream Strike Plus midsole material. And it was funny because I was actually sitting out here maybe three months ago, and I did a preview of the Adidas Supernova Rise. I think this was right before the running event, and now Adidas sent me this, which is pretty awesome. But anyway, here in the midsole, we see the Dream Strike Plus, and then there is a firmer traditional EVA. So they're calling these support rods, I believe, the gray EVA pieces here, but it's really a dual foam midsole construction. So that's gonna be really similar to what we see in the Vomero here, except if you look at the Vomero, the bottom with the EVA is much chunkier. We have a much larger helping of the EVA, but the Zoom X that we're getting on the top layer of the Vomero feels a little bit softer underfoot than the Supernova Rise. So first few miles, as I was warming up into the shoe, it felt pretty peppy and poppy. It was a nice ride. Again, not the softest, squishiest material, but as I was picking up the pace, turning over a little bit, it wasn't going super fast because I had the stroller, it did come alive. So it's a shoe where you can do a little bit of some faster work in it. Now that being said, it is not the most flexible shoe. So as I went through the course of that run, it felt a little bit stiff and clunky. It's not a super heavy shoe, but it also does not feel light at all. So I think with the denser feeling of this Piba here, combined with maybe not having the lightest construction, 
suspension from the upper. It doesn't feel like a shoe you're gonna wanna lace up and do speed work in, but it is a highly protective daily trainer. And so that's something that I've been looking for in shoes recently, and I just highlighted the Rebel V4 in a ton of videos on the channel. That is not a protective shoe by any means. I really enjoyed running in it, and it broke in. It was nice and flexible. It was fun. It softened up, but it was not protective at all. And I took that up to 23 miles, three hours. And by the end of that, while it did perform well, it didn't feel like I was bottoming out. I just wanted something different on my feet. So with this shoe, I felt highly protected for the whole time and running at almost an hour and a half with the stroller can get a little bit taxing. And I felt this shoe did a good job keeping my legs fresh. So while it wasn't the most exciting ride, I wasn't getting a ton of natural bounce. I did get some bounce as I picked up the pace. There was the perfect amount of cushion for the run that I did today. Now in terms of the upper and the fit, I did have to stop and relace the shoe and Adidas does not have the best uppers. Let's just throw that out there. Adidas, you can work on your uppers. The Boston 12 had one of the weirdest uppers. I have figured out how to lace it correctly. Audi Zero SL, the upper there is okay. It's really shallow. There's not a lot of volume in it. This one, it fit my foot okay, but I did have to work to get the right lockdown on it. So it did feel also like it ran a little bit long and it wasn't like I had a ton of room in the front of the toe box. It just feels like it's a longer platform. And I'm not sure if that's because the foam on the back here juts out a little bit, but it feels like a long, narrow shoe on foot. I found that some of these European brands though, in general, tend to have this longer, narrower fit even if the upper isn't super constraining so this wasn't as tight by any means as a Saucony or a Puma but it also wasn't as roomy as something we're gonna get from a New Balance so I'd put it right in the middle if you have a wider foot I believe they make a wide version of this but it's probably not gonna be the best option in the standard fit if you do have a wider foot now in terms of the rubber coverage we're getting and the performance that we got out there on any of those muddy and dirt sections this did a really nice job Adidas is rubber even in not the continental versions does really well one thing that is a little bit curious to me though is that they've left some areas areas of foam exposed even though we have a ton of rubber coverage so if you look at where my hand is right here it's almost the same color as the rubber but this is actually the Piba foam bleeding out over the side here and I know my guy Jeremy this is actually where he tends to strike the most so if you are a heavy forefoot striker this is going to wear right through so that's a little bit of an odd design choice now you can also see that we have these support rods down here I'm not sure what exactly having the rods like that does to the ride of the shoe maybe it adds a little bit more flexibility than if they just had a flat layer of EVA on the bottom but I think that might be contributing a little bit to that clunkier feel. And I know that Adidas does have a stability and a max stack version of this guy coming. So with that, I would like to see how this Dream Strike Plus performs without any of that EVA. Just give us maybe some continental rubber and a max stack. I think that might be a nice shoe because the EVA in this, while it is going to add some stability, I'm not sure if it's doing too much other than that. Maybe it'll add a little bit of durability as well. But the Dream Strike Plus foam maybe felt a little bit muted at slow lower paces given that we have that EVA in there. Now when it comes to the comfort, this is decently comfortable for a daily trainer. It definitely has more comfort than what we're gonna get in something like the Pegasus, but the reason I brought the Pegasus out here is because I wanted to talk a little bit about flexibility. Now you guys see me do the bend test all the time. I promise I love my shoes, I don't wanna hurt them, but the Supernova Rise did not feel like a flexible shoe at all. You can see I can bend it a little bit, but out there on the run, you really do get some firmness in the front from that EVA that rolls you through. So it feels like a little bit more of a rock not flexible shoe compared to something like the Pegasus. So I think this actually might be a nice option if you prefer a little bit more of that speed assistance for everyday miles. And while this is not a super fast shoe by any means, although we will put it through some light workouts, some strides to see how it performs at faster paces, it does have a little bit more of natural pop to it than the Pegasus, which feels a little bit more natural and dare I say minimal. And compared to the Vomero, even though these two weighed in at the exact same weight, the Vomero feels a little bit more work like it feels a little bit more robust and that's because if you look at the bottom here good catch good save there is a lot more rubber on the bottom of the Vomero and it's a lot thicker so I believe that's why the stack is pretty high in the Vomero here it's because the rubber height is included in those measurements as well so again the Vomero is gonna have some more natural flexibility up here feels a little bit more minimal even though the weight is the same than the Supernova Rise here this feels a little bit more naturally cushioned especially in the forefoot than the Vomero now one thing that all of these shoes that I just highlighted have in common, not the Audi Zero SL though, is the 
10 millimeter drop. This guy has an eight millimeter drop. Supernova Rise is sitting at a 10 millimeter drop and I think I'm coming over to your side on this guys. Everyone out there is saying 10 millimeter drops are outdated and I finally agree. This is the shoe that did it for me. After running in that Puma Velocity Nitro 3 and my guy Curiosity just commented on the Rebel V4 review I did, maybe the wear was worse on the Velocity Nitro 3 because of that drop. I agree. The higher heel stack, it makes me scuff. It makes me have a little bit more of an unnatural ride. Whereas when I'm in a six or even an eight millimeter drop like the Audi Zero SL here, it feels like I can just land a little bit more flat footed, which is the normal way that distance runners should be land. You land right at the tip of the heel and then just roll through the stride. That's how it should be. Whereas with these shoes, with the chunky heels and the 10 millimeter drop, I kind of drag and have a little bit of braking force. So 10 millimeter drop is not my favorite. That's what I would recommend them changing in the next version of this shoe. Bring it down to a six or even an eight millimeter drop. Also, if we could see a version of the Supernova Rise with out the EVA, that would be a really cool shoe too. But I know Adidas is cooking up some things and the Audi Zero SL2 will be coming and that'll probably have more of that light bouncy race day foam feeling, which is not what we're getting here in the Dream Strike Plus. And by the way, guys, on the Audi Zero SL2, I've asked Adidas's people and they say they have no information on the Audi Zero SL2 to give me right now. So I tried, guys. I know we've seen pictures on Instagram. I know I showed pictures of it from the running event, but they are being tight-lipped about it. I'm not sure why. Anyway, to close it out on the Supernova Rise here, first run, it's a decently comfortable workhorse style shoe. It's not gonna blow you away with the ride, but it does include a little bit of fun with this four foot rocker here. And with the Dream Strike Plus, it is gonna give you a little bit of that soft bounce when you pick up the pace. At slower paces, felt a little bit clunky as some of these shoes with the 10 millimeter drop and these chunkier heels do, but we'll have to get some more miles in it to see if this EVA softens up. I highly anticipate we'll see it soften up and break in around that 30 to 70 mile mark. So stay tuned for more coverage on the Supernova Rise. So all right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Let me know below which shoes you want to see me compare this to next. We got the Velocity Nitro 3, we got the Rebel, we got the Tracks with Elliott Runner, we got a few other shoes, Daily Trainers, and the Q waiting as well. So let me know what you want to see the Supernova Rise compared to. As always, I appreciate the support, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.